Hey, welcome back to Ultimate Arms. Today we're comparing the Remington 700 SPS Tactical to the Hawa Hera H7. So both of these rifles are very comparable. However, they do have some big distinguishing features which might make you choose one rifle over the other. So let's start with the price. So the Remington 700 SPS retails for about $1,250 Canadian or about $800 US, whereas the Hawa Hera H7 is about the same price of $1,250 Canadian or about $850 US. Now that's depending on which barrel you get on the Howa rifle. So the barrels on the Howa rifle are a 24 inch heavy contour barrel, 24 inch carbon fiber barrel, and a 22 inch standard barrel. They're all threaded at the muzzle so you can put a muzzle or a suppressor on them, whereas the Remington barrels are only a 22 inch medium contour barrel. So Hawa offers three different kinds of barrels for the rifles, which is nice to see. So there are options in terms of barrels. Like, you know, you're gonna need your thicker profile barrel if you're gonna be doing, say, like 10 round groups versus a slighter, lighter profile barrel for 10 shots, you know, in a row. For example, if you're doing PRS or a competition, you're gonna want that heavier profile barrel or even the carbon fiber barrel. Now for the calibers themselves. So Hawa only offers the Hawa Hera in 6.5 Cremor or 308 for now. Whereas the Remington 700 offers all sorts of different calibers for their rifles. Now let's go to the range and do some shooting. And don't forget to like and subscribe today. And we're back. So they're both quite accurate rifles, but one obviously is gonna be doing better than the other one. So the Remington 700 average for six different brands of match ammunition, shooting three shot groups was 0.816 inches at 100 yards, whereas the Howa's average was 1.04 inches at 100 yards. So they were very close to each other, but I think our best group is gonna be what distinguishes each rifle from itself. So the Remington's best group was 0.221 inches, which is incredible. While the Howe's best group, you know, was 0 0.440. Not really a big difference in terms of that, you know, but Remington did take the cake on that one. So in terms of the accuracy, Remington has turned itself around. So would that be enough to make someone, you know, want to buy the Remington instead of the Hawa or something else. Let's look at the rest of the rifle and make our decision from that. Now in this video we were using the Discovery ED PRS 5 to 25 by 56. An excellent scope if you're on a bit of a budget and you don't want to break the bank. They sell for around $560 Canadian or $400 US and they have great amount of elevation uh, 10 mils per rotation, ED glass, great quality scope if you're on a bit of a budget. We're also using the Arkin EP5 5 to 25 by 56. Another great scope if you're on a bit of a budget and you want something a little different, especially in the price, and they sell for about $700 Canadian. And I will leave a link in the description box below of where you can possibly find either one of those optics. Now we're also using uh, the Sunway Photo T4040 CS carbon fiber tripod with the SM86 saddle mount head on top of it. I'll leave a link in the description box below of where you can possibly find one if you want to look at getting one. Uh, a great tripod, uh, especially for that price. And there will be a discount code so you can get a little bit of a discount to boot. Next, let's talk about the actions. So both of these rifles have a 90 degree bolt on them. Um, you know, and they are not really equal. I mean, the Remington has this short, stumpy, flat, kind of a bolt knob on their rifles, you know, whereas the Hawa Hera has a more rounder bolt. It seems the arm seems to be a little bit longer. There are a little bit differences between each rifle. Now, with this one, with the Hawa, you know, you seem to be getting a little bit better leverage when you're, you know, um, 
uh, cycling rounds and ejecting rounds on them. Whereas with this Remington 700, it's being a little bit more you know, stubbier. It's a little harder to cycle rounds with, I find. Plus, on top of that, every time I go to eject a round, I always seem to bash my thumb onto the ocular of the rifle scope. It gets you really close to the ocular, which is, which is kind of a pain. Whereas with the Hawa, because it's a bit of a longer arm, your thumb doesn't really get in the way of the ocular at all, and you don't have a chance to actually smash it into the scope. And I always use medium-high rings, so, you know, like, there should be enough room. The only other thing that I don't like is neither rifle actually comes with a Picatinny rail. You actually have to buy that yourself. That doesn't really make sense to me, you know, especially with a rifle at this price point. They should throw in a 20 MOA rail. Um, so you're going to have to go out and buy, you know, an MDT rail or something like that. And they're $70, $80 for a rail. They should be throwing those in. Next, let's talk about the triggers. So the Remington trigger is really nice and smooth. There's no creep to it. Uh, it doesn't lag at all. It's, you know, it's really comfortable on the finger itself. I have no problems with the triggers. Um, if you don't like the triggers, you can always swap them out if you want. But at the same time, you know, with the rifle that you're buying for this kind of money, why would you need to swap it out? The other thing I do like is, you know, when you have it on safe, you know, it is just a two position safety. You can still extract your round with it. Now with the Hawa, the trigger on these, they are very nice and crisp. It is a two stage trigger of all things. You know, it breaks really nice. There's no creep to it or lag on the trigger. It feels really great. The other thing I like about theirs is they have a three position safety. So, you know, you're, you're safe here. You go to the middle, you can unlock it extract your round, you go forward, and it'll fire. Very, very nice, very, very easy. The bolts on these, I find the Howard to be a little smoother than the Remington 700. The Remington 700 feels like there's a little bit of grit on it for some reason. I don't know what it is, but it sure feels like that. And it doesn't, especially right about, right about there, it feels kind of gritty. I don't know what it is with them, but yeah, it seems to grab right in here. Whereas the Hawa, it doesn't grab at all. It's actually very, very smooth. There is kind of a sound to it, but you know what? <clears throat> at these prices, I'm not going to be expecting you know, like a perfect action on a rifle, but I would like a good action. Now, both rifles are about three to five pounds on the trigger weight. Uh, they are both adjustable. They're very similar, uh, except the fact that the Hawa has a two stage. It's called the Hack. Um, I don't believe you can actually swap the triggers out. Whereas the Remington, if you want, you can swap it out with the trigger tack, you know, any kind of trigger you want. But should you have to? Especially with the Howa. The Howa is offering you a whole whack load of stuff for the same price as the Remington. Now, the Remington is using the Hogue stock. Um, it's not even a free floated barrel. Like, the barrel actually touches the stock when it's on the rifle itself. Now, it is aluminum pillar bedded. Um, it's got a good texturing on it. It's got a nice soft plate on the back of it. And it's got eyelets for mounting a sling onto it. But if you're doing bench rest shooting or anything like that, it's always gonna catch on the bag that you're resting it on, but you can turn around and put a bipod setup onto it, but you can't put an arca rail onto it, which kind of sucks, whatever. Whereas the Hawa, it's got a polymer reinforced rear stock and aluminum four stock on it that's got all sorts of M locks on the sides, on the bottom. I have an MDT ground pod on this right now. It is fully free floated. Like there is a lot of room on the front end. Um, I actually like this. It's it's really comfortable. It's got texturing on the bottom here where you put your hand instead of wrapping it all the way around. You have it right here. It it works really nice. Now the Remington doesn't have a cheek riser on it. 
whereas the how has got the cheek riser but it's not adjustable it does slope upwards towards the front and the butt plate on it is not as soft it's more like a plastic butt plate compared to the remington 700 but they do have these panels on the sides where you can pop them open you can store stuff in them or you can just skeletonize it and leave it wide open um it's got a really nice grip on it you know it feels okay it's got kind of a slope grip a lot of people complain saying that it should be more vertical i don't mind it all that bad uh, for length of pull you can't do an adjustment on the remington for length of pull that kind of sucks but at the same time the Hawa does come with two steel inserts so you can actually adjust your length of pull right on the back here very nice and then it's got these areas here on the sides where you can actually mount your uh, a sling if you want to it comes on either sides of the rifle right in here it works very very well actually i'm actually really impressed with this gun now what do i think if i was going for accuracy on a rifle the remington 700 is a little more accurate with the howa harrow rifle um, i did use a hornady su performance 120 grain rounds that's where it threw off that six shot grouping i didn't use them on the remington 700 that was the only difference so yeah i think they're actually both extremely accurate rifles now if i want to do anything else to the remington 700 you know i could take the stock off i could put it in an mdt chassis i could swap out the trigger on it so everything that's holding this rifle back i could make better but then i already get that into how a hair rifle so why would I have to do that and start tinkering around with the gun? A lot of people say, yeah, I buy the gun so I can tinker with it and swap the, swap the stock off, swap the triggers off to make it so much better. But then you're adding more to the gun. So instead of a $1,200 gun, well, then you're into a $2,500 gun with an MDG chassis and new triggers. Plus, you have to get the mags for it because the Remington SPS is only like a matchbox mag. It's not a detachable mag on it. You'd figure for sure they'd have a box mag, whereas the Hawahara is a full detachable mag. And it has a really nice amidextric um, mag release on it, and it works really well. Uh, it doesn't bind. It works great. And you can use P mags on it, which is even better. So you don't have to use the steel mags if you don't want to. So there you go, guys. There's my review of the Remington 700 SPS Tactical versus the Hawahara h7 if you like the video hit the like button if you like the channel so far please subscribe and we'll see you next time at ultimate arms bye for now